Today you learn how to set up Oracle Cloud on their free tier. So Oracle Cloud have a tremendous free service, Oracle Cloud free tier. It's the most generous free tier I think you can get for a cloud service. Oracle Cloud allow you to have up to four processors and 24 gigabytes of RAM all for free. And that's on their always free tier. So these are ARM based Ampere processors. These are a little different from our normal AMD or Intel based processors. So things are a little bit different here. Um, I'm going to have to use a different panel than normal. I'm using AA panel to do this, but this once this is set up, this is quite simple to use. You can add websites, remove websites. I'm going to set up WordPress on here. WordPress is running really well, um, benchmarking really well. I'll show you that a bit later. But basically, all we have to do is Google Oracle Cloud free tier, go with the first link, and then all we have to do here is just go through the sign up process. The sign up process on this is a bit tedious. There's a few verifications you've got to get through. But once you've got through that, um, I'm going to skip ahead through the sign up process and we'll get to our dashboard and we'll start building this setup. So if all this sounds interesting, then keep watching. Okay, now we're logged into our Oracle Cloud account. We're using a free tier account as it says here. So once we're logged in, we want to go to our Get Started tab and we want to create a VM instance. Let's give our instance a name. I'm calling it Arm Demo for this. We want to change our image and shape. So let's change our image. I think for Arm, we want to use the most recent version of Oracle Linux. Let's go with version number eight there and select that one. Next thing we'll do is change the shape. So by default, we've got an AMD Micro, but we want to use the Ampere Arm processor. This has more options for CPU and memory. So tick this box here, and then we want to drag this up to four total CPUs and 24 uh, gigabytes of RAM. That's the most we can have on our free account here. So this all looks pretty good. Now down here, we want to add an SSH key. So I want to paste a public key and we can use whichever SSH software we want to use here. I'm going to use Putty for this example. You can actually download it from putty.org for free. Now Putty comes with all these apps. The first one we want to use is Putty Gen to generate a key. So we click generate and wiggle our mouse to get some random data to generate our key with. We're going to copy that key out here. Make sure I grab the start of that key. There we go. Let's copy that. And we want to actually save our private key. So let's go ahead and save that one. So call it arm demo um, private. And we'll save our public key as well. So arm demo pub looks good. And let's head back to our Oracle. We want to paste in that key for our public key. Looks all good. Everything else is default. Let's create our server. So this currently is provisioning and uh, it'll load up as uh, as it does in a few minutes. So we've got an IP address. Now this will change to green in just a second. So just be patient. All right, this is all running now. So we can copy our public IP address there and then load up putty. Our username is going to be OPC. We're going to go OPC here at and paste in that IP address. We're going to save this as arm um, uh, demo here. Save that on. And we also want to go down here to SSH and auth. We want to find that private key we set up earlier. There we go. Open that one there. Head back to the session and we want to save that on. And we should be able to open this up. So this looks like it's running quite nicely. I'll make the font a bit bigger on Putty for those of you in the back can read it a little bit more easily. So I'm going to exit there. Okay, so we want to run this as a super user. So we're going to type uh, sudo dash i. So now we've got a little hash mark there. Our future commands are going to be run as the super user because of that. And we want to run an update on the server before we go any further. So yum update and slash y. There we go. All right, while this is installing, let's point this uh, domain we're going to use for our demo over to this IP. So let's get that IP again, shall we? Uh, copy that public IP address. Now I'm using Namecheap for my domain, but whatever you're using should be similar. We want to use our DNS manager in Namecheap. It's called Advanced DNS. We're going to add in an A record for the root and pop that in our IP address there. Save that on. Another A record. I want to use a subdomain for our web panel. So we're going to call it AA panel to make it really obvious. And then paste in the IP address. So then I can access my panel at aapanel.idspot.xyz in the future when we set that up. And we want one more for a C name. 
www and we want that to be idspot.xyz. So that looks all good. This can take a couple of hours for this to actually point over. So it's worth doing it now while the stuff's installing. And then when it's time to set up our um, domain and our SSL and stuff, this should be ready to go. All right, so that is our server updated. The next step here is gonna to be to install AA panel. So I'm gonna paste in the script that will install. I'll share all these commands on my blog. So check the description in this video and then you'll get uh, a link to find all these commands. So I'm gonna install our AA panel and let's go ahead and do that. So first thing we'll get an option. Do you wanna install AA panel in the www directory? Yes, let's do that. So this is gonna take 10 or 20 minutes for this to install. So just be patient, come back, have a cup of tea or whatever, and we, this should be done. All right, so that took seven minutes. Now we're gonna get that success message and we've got some details about how to access our panel, username and password, and the ports that we need to use for the panel. So let's copy all that. In Putty, you just highlight it and that copies it to the clipboard. I'll just paste that into Notepad so we can use that later. First thing we'll do is Let's copy these ports. We're going to use these to uh, open those up in our cloud. So we want to go to our virtual cloud network here and we click on our subnet there and default security list there. Click on that one. Now we want to add some ingress rules. So CIDR and we want to change this source CIDR to uh, 0000 slash 0. So 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 slash 0 and uh, the port range. I'll paste those ports in. We can delete those pipes and replace them with commas to separate them. So that should be good. Uh, that's 4838 80 443 20 and 21. Let's call this AA panel in the description. So we've got uh, some description for us later if we need it. And let's go ahead and add those ingress rules. So those look all good. Now we should be able to access our panel from our web browser now. So to do that, we're gonna copy out the internet address, that's the top one, and copy that. And then we're gonna use that username and password to log in. So let's go ahead and do that. So pasting that address into our address bar, username and password, we can log in. Here we go. Save that password. And now we've got a setup wizard, we can set up our server. Now normally for WordPress, I like using Nginx, but with this ARM processor, we've run into some compatibility issues using that stack. So we're gonna use the standard LAMP stack to do this tutorial. So we'll use this one here and click that. And this will start installing our Apache and MySQL pure FTP and go ahead and finish that off for us. So all this will automatically install, just, just be patient and come back when it's done. Okay, so that took a pretty long time. Uh, looking at this list, we've got all the things we need. We've got PHP, MySQL, PureFTP, Apache, and PHP My Admin. So that looks all good. We can close out of that. Next thing we can do is we can set up a website. So let's go ahead, let's add a site. We want to do RDSBot XYZ here. We want to create a database to do this. So we want MySQL, and we want to copy these database settings. So this is our database name and username. Copy that. Let's put that into that notepad that we set up earlier. So just keep those database credentials handy because we'll need those later. And PHP 7.4 looks good. And we want to apply for SSL and HTTP redirect to HTTPS. So that looks all good. Let's go ahead and try submitting this one. All right, so we've got a success message here. Just make sure we've saved those um, credentials as I mentioned earlier. So we'll close out of that. All right, so let's try reaching our website now. So we haven't got the SSL working yet in this browser. It might be just worth restarting the browser and seeing if that fixes it. So just restarting Chrome here, I'm gonna paste that in. There we go, that looks fine. You'll notice we're working here with SSL as well, so that looks all good. All right, let's head back to our AA panel. And now we can start trying to install WordPress. So let's go to our files here. And in here, we wanna select our website. So this is our, our folder here. So if we just head over to wordpress.org slash download, we can scroll down, we can get the link to download WordPress there. Copy that link. Back in AA panel, we can actually do a remote download into this folder. So let's go ahead and paste in the remote download for wordpress.org slash latest zip. Go ahead and confirm that. This will only take a few seconds. There we go, we can see we have WordPress latest zip there. We can actually unzip that and confirm. There we go. So now we've actually got WordPress inside that folder. We actually want it to be in this folder, not in this WordPress folder. So go into that folder and let's just select everything and cut it 
and let's go back up to the root folder there and then let's just paste it in there. Seems good. We actually can delete that WordPress folder now that that should be empty. So let's just go to Dell there. Confirm that. That looks all good. Now if we head back to Ideaspot XYZ or whatever your domain is, I'm going to reload that and we'll get the WordPress set up now. So this is going really well. So we are going to choose English. Continue. Let's go. And this is where we need our database credentials. So remember when we set up the site in AA panel, we got the database uh, name and password. So let's pop those in. So name is that. Sorry, there we go. Username and user, uh, database name are the same there. So that looks all good. We can click submit and run the install. Then we just fill in a title, a username. It generates a strong password. So just copy that and keep that safe. Uh, put your email address in there and install WordPress. Okay, now we can log in. Outstanding. We've got uh, SSL running on our domain. We've got WordPress running perfectly on our AA panel using our free four CPU, 24 gigabyte Oracle instance. So from here, it's going to be pretty easy to install a theme, start building a site or install a migration plugin, bring over an existing site onto here. So very straightforward, really, in the end. There's a few more things I might look at in AA panel. So for a start, we've got a just an IP address to access this. I think we can actually change this to a domain. So we can go to settings here. All right, now earlier in the tutorial, what we did on Namecheap with our domain is we pointed a subdomain called AA panel. We pointed that over to our IP address. So in theory, we should be able to add AA panel .xyz here, and we can access our panel through this domain rather than using an IP address. Let's save that in and see if this works. So now we're going to get kicked out, I think, and we'll have to log in using our um, subdomain rather than the IP address. So let's go ahead and do that. So our login address actually has this code on the end of it. So we have to have this code and put this on the end of our, our new subdomain address. So rather than logging in uh, slash login, we log in at that unique address that we use to reach our panel. So I'm going to try logging in like that. So that's going to be our subdomain slash uh, port 8888 and then slash our unique code there. So we're going to copy that out and paste that in there and we should be able to log in. So there we go, we can log in with our domain here now. It's still the same username and password as we set up and we can log in again. So there we go. So we've got our domain working on our panel. Now, now that we've got a domain working, we should be able to add an SSL to the panel as well. So let's go to settings and hopefully we can add panel SSL. So let's try and turn that on. We'll get a warning message here and we want to use a Let's Encrypt certificate, add an admin email here and then we click this checkbox here and let's go ahead and try this out. Click confirm. So just let this process while it issues an SSL certificate. So hopefully this works. Cool. So as soon as we've done this, it's kicked us out. It's given us an HTTPS error and it says certificate transparency required. I think we just need to restart our browser or maybe clear our cookies and this should be okay. Let's hope it's okay anyway. All right. So just after restarting my browser, I can get into the panel with SSL using my subdomain. So this has worked out okay. Just be sure that you're using HTTPS when you type that in with your um, panel URL there. Same login and password, and we can get in here and we can see that now we're using our own domain, we've got SSL. So this is uh, a more secure and professional looking setup than what is by default with that IP address by itself. I will mention here, um, AA panel has some references, reference HTML, you can actually turn off the control panel by using this command and you can turn off the panel SSL by using this command. So if you run into any trouble, you can turn those features off. In my case where I'm using Putty, I'll just copy that and then right click to paste it into my um, Putty terminal with the right click and make sure I'm running a sudo. We've got the hash mark there and um, just run these commands to remove the uh, SSL and remove the domain if you need to do that. So, um, but I've got this working just fine. So I'll obviously stick with it. The other little tweak we can do is under the app store. So there's lots of things we can add here. Some of them are free. Some of them cost a little extra. If we skip to page four, there's one called sys firewall, which is free. So that gives us, um, your basic, um, Linux firewall systems. I'm going to install that. Let's confirm. So this is going to install our system firewall. Now, if we head to security, we should be able to control our firewall. 
through here now. So we can see this firewall is already working. If we click here, we'll actually get access to all the ports that are open at the moment. So this default setup looks pretty good anyway. So I think this is nice. So I think we're pretty much good to go here. All right, so before we wrap this up, I'm just gonna install a basic starter template website. So I've got the Cadence Agency theme with its starter template here. I've gone ahead and set this up on my ideaspot.xyz test website. I'm gonna run this through Google PageSpeed Insights and just see how good this free setup actually works. All right, so our results, we got a 95 on mobile, which is not bad. Desktop, slightly better with 97. So no no issues in terms of its performance. I mean, for free, what can you expect? This is, this is really quite good. So um, this is pretty much wraps it up. Pretty good performance server. It's all for free. You do need to use this AA panel. I wasn't able to get this working with uh, Word Ops or get this working with Cyber Panel, things like that. The things I usually prefer to use. So I'm not really sure how stable or secure AA panel is because I haven't been using it for very long. So try it out for yourself. Let me know in the comments how it goes for you. I'm interested in seeing how this works over a longer time period. But uh, a lot of you have asked me to do this tutorial set up the ARM processor with the free four CPUs and 24 gigabytes of RAM. I was finally able to actually access that service and set this up. So really quite enjoyed it, learned how to use a new panel. So um, yeah, hit like, say thanks in the comments. Otherwise, if you want something else to use for your WordPress hosting, you can get uh, 30 days free at Vulture, or you can get uh, three days free at Cloudways. Those are my recommended ways of running WordPress, very stable, secure, very fast as well. But it does come at a price. This is obviously free. So if you want to try this out, definitely try this out. You'll definitely learn a lot, if nothing else. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.